Okay, so um, as I um, as promised, I'm going to be going through the first of a few different types of interview questions um, that may come up if you interview at Oxford or Cambridge. Um, this is going to be an economics question. Um, so it is a is a genuine question that's come up before in interviews, and so I just want to talk through, you know, how to approach it. How would you go about answering it? What are some key things to be thinking about to, to kind of make yourself come out? Um, looking your best basically. So this particular question um, came from a set of uh, questions that um, the students are given before um, the actual interview itself. So you have about, uh, it depends on the college, they all have different ways of running these interviews. Some of them you don't get any questions before, some of them you get readings before. So in this particular case, um, you, um, we were given five or six questions, I believe, on uh, about 30 minutes before the interview. But they, then there were also about three or four kind of um, newspaper articles that was for the um, management portion. So basically, you had about half an hour to read through them and try and solve them. But realistically, honestly, there wasn't really enough time to solve this at all because there were so many questions. Um, really, it was only enough time to kind of read through what the kind of setup of the question was and start having to think about it. Um, because there are like five or six questions on that paper, they don't ex actually expect you to get through all those questions. So I think in hindsight, the better method would be to maybe focus on the first two and try and get really good answers thinking for those. And then, you know, that would give you a much better start in the interview because it's unlikely that you're going to get through more than two or three anyway um, in the kind of time period. Um, it depends if it's half an hour, then two or three. If it's an hour, then I'd expect to get through all of them. But although the questions on the actual kind of um, pre-interview sheet are pretty basic, when you get into the interview, there are extended questions going off of those questions or just things that tutors come up with in the moment based on something you've said or based on something that they'd already been thinking about or some other student might have said it in a previous interview and they just want to get a comparison of how you consider the question versus another person. So essentially use this time to think about um, what is the question asking? Do I have any questions about the question? That is really important because as soon as you go in, you need to make sure you clarify anything that you weren't too sure about what the question was asking you. Um, because obviously you don't want to start off with completely the wrong idea, which is really easy for it to happen and it's nothing to do with intelligence, it just can be a mistake. So anything that can help you feel like you've fully understood the question, those are the things that you want to be kind of writing down and ready to ask. The second thing to think about would maybe be how does your mathematics or your further mathematics or any maths preparation that you've done link in or tie into this question. So although it's going to be fairly abstract, there's still everything is based in kind of like A-level maths. You're not really going to have to know more than that because that would be kind of unfair. So um, think about, okay, from my maths, what, what, what part or what subject area is this? And is there anything that I can maybe make a formula for? Is there anything I can think of which I've done in class, which links to the same type of problem that I could maybe mention to them as a starting point? Um, so these are the things that you want to be thinking about in your prep time. Okay, so let's have a look at this question together. So the setup goes like this. So we're given this question where it says, we have a thousand light bulbs all set out in a row. So a very, very long row, um, one after the other. We've then got a thousand shooters all lined up and ready to go as well. So every single light bulb in the beginning is turned switched off. Okay, so they are all off. What's gonna happen is that each shooter is going to walk down that entire row of light bulbs flicking each switch as they go along, okay? And then the rules are given here. So the first tutor is essentially going to flick the switch for every light bulb. The second tutor is going to flick the switch for every second light bulb. The third will do the same for every third until we get to um, the last of the tutors. The question is actually here. So after each tutor has passed, how many light bulbs are on and which light bulbs would these be? So it looks deceptively easy. Uh, I mean, it's not the most difficult thing, but it just takes a few steps to get that because you could just jump straight to the answer. I'm sure some of you have already figured out what is going on here, but um, it's all about talking through the problem because that's what they're more interested in. How did you get that? Because you might have seen this problem before, like maybe this came comes up for you, then you don't want to skip straight that. You want to talk to them to show them how, how you process and understand a question. So first thing I would suggest doing is definitely to draw out some sort of um, 
um, diagram, okay? So obviously you're not gonna draw out all a thousand. That would be, um, I hope that's obviously what, not what you would do. I would maybe go with the first sort of 10 because it just seems like a reasonable, reasonable number. So um, we, what I, would, what I would first do, to be honest, is probably just to say, okay, can I try and see what would happen to these first 10 and see if that gives me any clues? So I would say, okay, so they are all initially off, okay? Now the first tutor goes down and he is switching every single one on. So after the first tutor has passed, we will see that every single light bulb should be on. Now let's go to the second tutor. So they're gonna now flick the switch for every second. So when the second tutor has passed, we would be in this situation here. So we've got five that are on and five that are off. Let's see what happens when the third tutor passes. So he would go here, he would go, um, wait, that's not the sixth one, sorry. He would go here and he would go here, okay? So after the third shoot has passed, we've got one, two, uh, sorry, one, two, three, four that are on and six that are off. Um, you can't waste too much time kind of fiddling around with um, going through every single tutor, but I, I would say they would let you probably go through at least a few of these. So I'd maybe, I don't know, let's go up to five, shall we? So the fourth tutor passes, we've got four, and then we've got uh, uh, the eighth one here, the fifth one as well. Um, we've got this one will now be off, and this one will be on. In fact, let's just go to 10, we might as well. So then the sixth tutor passes off, the seventh tutor passes off, the eighth tutor passes off here, the ninth tutor passes, uh, this will be on, and then the tenth tutor, this will be off. So now let's have a look at which light bulbs, I should probably label these actually. If you do make a mis uh, if you do think of something that you could do as you're going along, that's absolutely fine. Just tell them what you're doing to say, oh, it'll probably be easier to label these. So after the first 10 tutors have passed the first 10 light bulbs, we can identify number, this one is being on, this one is being on, and also this ninth one is being on, and everything else is off. So already it's pretty easy to identify. It's looking like it's going to be square numbers, and now we want to think about why it would be square numbers. So if we think about the uh, nature of these numbers, then what we'll see is that one, if we split into the factors that uh, you need, with one to make the number, we've got one times one would make one, and it's got no other factors. With two, we've got one and uh, we've got two. With three, we've got one and three. With four, we would have one, two, and uh, one times four, or two times two. With five, we would have one times five, and with six, we would either have one times six or two times three. So what you'll notice immediately is that for this one here, there's only one factor uh, for one because it times is by itself. Uh, with two, um, we've got um, two numbers, so two tutors would pass, so it would be flicked on and it would be flicked off again. With three, it would be flicked on and flicked off again. With four, again, we've got the case where one is uh, two is multiplied by itself. So again, we've got a repeat, and that would give us one, four, and two as the actual factor. So it would be flicked on, off, and on again. Um, and I think it's pretty obvious for these as well. So the pattern you should be noticing is that for the numbers which have an odd number of factors, they will be flicked an odd number of times because of the tutors passing by. As a result, because it all starts as, um, as off, what we will see is that those will be the only light bulbs that are on at the end. So the rule that you need to try and find is that all square numbers will be on. Um, and obviously the reason for that we can explain as I have just done there. So that answers this part of the question, which light bulbs would these be? Okay, so pretty simple there. Now we wanna know how many light bulbs would therefore be on of that 1,000. So how would you go about solving that? Okay, so we know it's all square numbers, so we wanna try and find what would be the largest square number under 1,000, how many square numbers are under 1,000, right? So I think that's pretty simple. Let's just root um, 1,000, and what would that give you? I think roughly 31 plus, okay? So um, because of that, we know that obviously if it's gonna be point something, we wanna round down because we can't have anything be greater than 1,000. So the answer would be that there would be 31 light bulbs at the end of every tutor passing by of how many light bulbs are on, okay? 
So that would be the basic like setup of the question. How, where would they go from here? Let's say you solve that and then what would they want to know next? Well, they might want to know something like, what in the case of 10,000 light bulbs, can you tell me, is there a better way that you could come up with this answer without um, actually manually, you know, working out which ones would all be squares? Is there a formula that you could maybe come up with that would do this? I don't know. It would be up to them. Or you may just move on from this question, okay? So there are a few different things they're looking for here. First of all is, are you methodical? Are you able to really lay out a problem in a way that not only you can understand, but others around you or anybody you're explaining to could understand and follow relatively easily? Um, and then if you do come across somewhere where you're stuck, is there something, another angle that you could maybe look at to help you solve the problem? Is there something that you could draw upon from your, your maths? Like for things like knowing that, you know, you can have odd numbers of factors and things like this. Can you use basic maths knowledge to answer a question where it's not very obvious what you should be using? Um, if they do give you another question, would you at least know how to start thinking about it? Um, even if you don't know quite what to do. And um, yeah, just then, ba apart from that, basic sort of logic and uh, ability to speak well on the question. So you can see this question is really not very difficult. There's a, a bit of a, a myth that interview questions are impossible, that there are just, there's no way that an, an ordinary person can solve it. And that's completely untrue. Anybody can solve these questions. Um, it's only to A-level standard the maths required. Beyond that, it's just... Are you going to remain calm? Are you having a good time? Do you enjoy solving this type of puzzle? But um, yeah, so that is uh, that's really that's really what you would be looking at in an interview. So um, well, I'm, I'm I'm just doing this so that I hopefully you can see that uh, I hope you can see that it's really not as scary or difficult or impossible. I think as a lot of people make it out to be, it's it's just it's just being prepared and it's knowing what to expect and the standard expected of you. This type of problem, this is the standard they'll expect, nothing more, nothing less. So as long as you can solve this with relative, like relatively easily, then you should be absolutely good. So I'm just going to do the one problem for now um, and do a few others uh, later on. But I hope this gives you a nice kind of starting point for what you might expect uh, at an interview.